He's the T-Rex of political talk. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. It happens throughout history. 99% of the time, governments become tyrannies. Free systems that have any modicum of justice are extremely rare. And on every front, we have been looted by offshore private corporations. It's very simple. The New World Order is offshore corporations buying off county, city, federal governments, and then having those governments go into debt to the bankers for the fiat currency the bankers create out of nothing. But the bankers are greedy. They don't want to just blow out third world countries completely or use the United States and Europe to fund their operations, Japan as well. They now, as they said they would do in 2002 when their documents got leaked, the BBC covered it, implode the entire world and then have everybody in debt to a new global currency and you will have your credits on your ID card. And you will still have a dollars, you will still have loonies, you will still have pounds, you will still have pesos, you will still have yons and yen, but it will be globally set every day to the value they want, interest rates will be set, and you will pay hundreds, hundreds of new taxes to them. It's all been announced. Now, ten years ago, I'd read out of government documents this on air and tell you where to get them. People would roll their eyes and drive down the highway and say it wasn't true. You'd lazily say I was making it up. Many people would. Um, that's why we knew all of this. We've done nothing special except listen to the globalists, what they said they did. We're now here. Now they're announcing it and putting their spin on it. So it's people say, well, why would you say mainstream media lies but then come out and use mainstream media? No, they would deny this existed while they were setting it up. Now that they're going ahead with it and launching it, they're announcing it but putting a spin on it. Oh, isn't it good they want to restrict home gardens because you might grow pot? Oh, isn't it good they're going to protect the food supply by basically shutting down the farms and ranches with total regulation and control that just can't be followed or you'll go bankrupt? Oh, isn't it great they're getting ready to attack Iran? Oh, isn't it wonderful we need martial law in the city? The police are corrupt. We need troops. You know, isn't it wonderful? Oh, they're building camps for the tent city people, and you can't be in the park anymore in a tent. We're going to make you go to the camp, and there, there's movies every night, and you know, they'll show it on the news, and, oh, look, you get free medical care in the camp. They had to implode things to then play the part of the Savior. Now, drum roll, because I don't want to just cover this with Bob Chapman and then not have it really sink into people. Because this is, this is the final balloon going up, okay, monetarily. Bob Chapman said months ago here, other economists we've had on said months ago, the New York Times said it's believed the Federal Reserve is issuing some type of secret uh, currency. Then the London Telegraph and AP reported in the last five days in scores. I mean, I've got a stack of them. But let me just read one of the headlines. IMF poised to print billions of dollars in global quantitative easing. The International Monetary Fund is poised to embark on what analysts have described as a global quantitative easing by printing Billions of dollars worth of a global super currency, an unprecedented new effort to address the economic crisis. And a day later, this was uh, Monday, they came out and said, oh, actually, they've already been issuing it. So understand, this isn't just like Zimbabwe right now or Iceland uh, or the famous Weimar Republic, literally with wheelbarrows of marks, you know, million dollar marks, their dollar to buy a loaf of bread and you'd go into a restaurant to eat dinner and you would pay for the meal first because it would change on a chalkboard on the wall in the two hours you were there eating. It might triple in price in an hour and a half, two hours. That is on record. Now, in those cases, the government just issued currency and it destroyed the value and savings. This is worse. The Federal Reserve is buying U.S. Treasury securities itself because the world is backing away from them knowing they're worthless. It's happening now. And then the Federal Reserve in some manipulation, its private shareholders are going to get some interest on this. So so, so with taxpayer-backed fiat money, they are then buying treasury notes, and then they get a profit out of it. I mean, this is this is something at an, at an even worse level. And so I wanted to bring Bob Chapman on perfect timing today at the internationalforecaster.com, one of the formerly the largest newsletter in the world before he retired. He's come back with it. Uh, and, of course, he was the largest uh, private gold and silver broker. Um, 
and he's a patriot. I really needs no introduction here. Uh, but, Bob, uh, is this not the big balloon going up? It's, it's part of it. It's the, the stream, so to speak. Um, special drawing rights have been around for a long time. Uh, the last time I saw them being used was in the late 60s. And, of course, in 68, um, the central banks took a whack at, uh, at uh, gold, and that didn't last very long. And then about 10 years later, uh, they did the same thing by selling, you know, more gold. And gold went down a little bit, and then went crazy. So every time they sell gold, uh, the gold goes ballistic afterwards. But this is a trillion-dollar buy, according to the Associated Press, a trillion. Well, special drawing rights are not used as money in the system on the street. They are bank to bank. And all it is is a replication of what other central banks are doing. They're just adding to the flow, and they're counting these as assets. So they are lent the SDRs, to the banking system. Let's say it's a European Central Bank, and let's say they give them a 5 trillion SDRs, and then they can replace on their balance sheet other currency that they have with these so that their balance sheet will look like it's more solvent than And so is. that's why they're announcing internationally they're doing it, and then domestically they're doing it. Um, this is hyperinflationary, is it not? Yes, it is. And the second part of what you discussed earlier, uh, that is what the Federal Reserve has admitted. And you, you know, on this program four months ago, I said that the Treasury, I believe, was secretly selling bonds to the Federal Reserve. And they, in turn, were giving the money, which they make up out of thin air, to the Treasury Department, which goes out and spends it immediately, monetizes it, and then they take the uh, the uh, the bonds that they have and they lend them out, or they sell bonds slowly into the market in order to liquefy themselves, so that the Treasury doesn't have to do that. The Treasury does large tranches at each time, you know, 30 billion here, 35 billion there, 62 billion there. Uh, in 30 and 10 and uh, five-year uh, bonds and notes. In, in fact, they started a seven-year bond that they haven't used for 15 or 20 years. And so this is what they've been doing secretly. So the $300 billion, part of that $1.2 trillion yesterday, that $300 billion, I believe, has already been spent or at least a good part of it. And Bernanke is going to be back for more. And I figure they will lead at least an absolute minimum of $5 trillion to continue to fund the Treasury that's going to have a heck of a time trying to sell bonds. And, you yeah, know, they're having to sell it to themselves. Trillion dollars worth now. Yeah, they're trying to sell it to themselves. Uh, let's get into that and, and the well, backing you know, away. Alex, For the last point here. This is immediately hyperinflationary. And that's why gold went from 882 to 960 in two days. In fact, gold is almost relatively unchanged today, which is very good. Gold's going considerably higher. Gold and silver are the ones who are going to profit by this. This is the only place to go with in, with your investment money is in gold and silver. And I can't stress that enough. There are no more alternatives. Well, we're going to get into gold a little bit later. Um, mainline economists are saying this is going to cause worldwide hyperinflation. All major governments are hyperinflating. And, you know, Obama's announcing a trillion here, a trillion there every week. Uh, you know, basically bigger than the entire GDP of the country now. Uh, it's clear they've made the decision to hyperinflate. What's the time frame on that, and what's it going to look like on the street in 12 months? Well, first of all, it'll start hitting next month, April, May. And it's already begun. It began in November, but it takes a little while for it to get into the system. Uh, real on, uh, real uh, CPI, real inflation, is somewhere between 9 and 10%. 
it's starting to move up. And you can't look at the government figures. They don't mean anything. And so this year, we'll probably get back to real inflation of something on, on the order of 15%, maybe higher. And in the following year, you're looking at 30% or more. And so that's the way I see it evolving. And um, they are going to, as you just said, continue to throw money at everything. And that means that all the currencies in the world, not just the dollar, are going to be doing the same thing. They all have zero interest rates or close to it. Uh, they are all creating money and credit. I just looked at the figures yesterday, and they're in uh, tomorrow's international forecaster. Uh, 